June 30th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Chronicles chapters 28 and 29 from the Old Testament. David assembled in Jerusalem all the officials of Israel, including the commanders of the tribes, the commanders of the army divisions that served the king, the commanders of units of a thousand and a hundred, the officials who were in charge of all the property and livestock of the king and his sons, the eunuchs, and the warriors, including the most skilled of them. King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my brothers and my people. I wanted to build a temple where the ark of the Lord's covenant could be placed as a footstool for our God. I have made the preparations for building it. But God said to me, You must not build a temple to honor me, for you are a warrior and have spilled blood. The Lord God of Israel chose me out of my father's entire family to become king over Israel and have a permanent dynasty. Indeed, he chose Judah as leader and my father's family within Judah, and then he picked me out from among my father's sons and made me king over all Israel. From all the many sons the Lord has given me, he chose Solomon, my son, to rule on his behalf over Israel. He said to me, Solomon, your son, is the one who will build my temple and my courts, for I have chosen him to become my son, and I will become his father. I will establish his kingdom permanently, if he remains committed to obeying my commands and regulations, as you are doing this day. So now, in the sight of all Israel, the Lord's assembly, and in the hearing of our God, I say this. Carefully observe all the commands of the Lord your God, so that you may possess this good land and may leave it as a permanent inheritance for your children after you. And you, Solomon, my son, obey the God of your father and serve him with a submissive attitude and a willing spirit, for the Lord examines all minds and understands every motive of one's thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him, but if you abandon him, he will reject you permanently. Realize now that the Lord has chosen you to build a temple as his sanctuary. Be strong and do it. David gave to his son Solomon the blueprints for the temple porch, its buildings, its treasuries, its upper areas, its inner rooms, and the room for atonement. He gave him the blueprints of all he envisioned for the courts of the Lord's temple all the surrounding rooms, the storehouses of God's temple, and the storehouses for the holy items. He gave him the regulations for the divisions of priests and Levites, for all the assigned responsibilities within the Lord's temple, and for all the items used in the service of the Lord's temple. He gave him the prescribed weight for all the gold items to be used in various types of service in the Lord's temple, for all the silver items to be used in various types of service for the gold lampstands and their gold lamps, including the weight of each lampstand and its lamps, for the silver lampstands, including the weight of each lampstand and its lamps, according to the prescribed use of each lampstand, for the gold used in the display tables, including the amount to be used in each table, for the silver to be used in the silver tables, for the pure gold used for the meat forks, bowls, and jars, for the small gold bowls, including the weight for each bowl. For the small silver bowls, including the weight for each bowl. And for the refined gold of the incense altar, he gave him the blueprint for the seat of the gold cherubim that spread their wings and provide shelter for the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. David said, All of this I put in writing as the Lord directed me and gave me insight regarding the details of the blueprints. David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and brave. Do it. Don't be afraid and don't panic, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not leave you or abandon you before all the work for the service of the Lord's temple is finished. Here are the divisions of the priests and Levites who will perform all the service of God's temple. All the willing and skilled men are ready to assist you in all the work and perform their service. The officials and all the people are ready to follow your instructions. King David said to the entire assembly, My son Solomon, 
The one whom God has chosen is just an inexperienced young man, and the task is great, for this palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. So I have made every effort to provide what is needed for the temple of my God, including the gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, as well as a large amount of onyx, settings of antimony, and other stones, all kinds of precious stones and alabaster. Now to show my commitment to the temple of my God, I donate my personal treasure of gold and silver to the temple of my God, in addition to all that I have already supplied for this holy temple. This includes 3,000 talents of gold from Ophir and 7,000 talents of refined silver for overlaying the walls of the buildings for gold and silver items and for all the work of the craftsmen. Who else wants to contribute to the Lord today? The leaders of the families, the leaders of the Israelite tribes, the commanders of units of a thousand and a hundred, and the supervisors of the king's work contributed willingly. They donated for the service of God's temple 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. All who possessed precious stones donated them to the treasury of the Lord's temple, which was under the supervision of Jehiel the Gershonite. The people were happy with their donations, for they contributed to the Lord with a willing attitude. King David was also very happy. David praised the Lord before the entire assembly, O Lord God of our father Israel, you deserve praise forevermore. O Lord, you are great, mighty, majestic, magnificent, glorious, and sovereign over all the sky and earth. You have dominion and exalt yourself as the ruler of all. You are the source of wealth and honor. You rule over all. You possess strength and might to magnify and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your majestic name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be in a position to contribute this much? Indeed, everything comes from you and we have simply given back to you what is yours. For we are resident foreigners and nomads in your presence, like all our ancestors. Our days are like a shadow on the earth without security. O Lord, our God, all this wealth which we have collected to build a temple for you, to honor your holy name, comes from you. It all belongs to you. I know, my God, that you examine thoughts and are pleased with integrity. With pure motives I contributed all this, and now I look with joy as your people who have gathered here contribute to you. O Lord God of our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, maintain the motives of your people and keep them devoted to you. Make my son Solomon willing to obey your commands, rules, and regulations, and to complete building the palace for which I have made preparations. David told the entire assembly, Praise the Lord your God. So the entire assembly praised the Lord God of their ancestors. They bowed down and stretched out flat on the ground before the Lord and the King. The next day they made sacrifices and offered burnt sacrifices to the Lord. 1,000 bulls, 1,000 rams, 1,000 lambs, along with their accompanying drink offerings and many other sacrifices for all Israel. They held a feast before the Lord that day and celebrated. Then they designated Solomon, David's son, as king a second time. Before the Lord they anointed him as ruler and Zadok as priest. Solomon sat on the Lord's throne as king in place of his father David. He was successful and all Israel was loyal to him. All the officers and warriors, as well as all of King David's sons, pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. The Lord greatly magnified Solomon before all Israel and bestowed on him greater majesty than any king of Israel before him. David, son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. He reigned over Israel 40 years. He reigned in Hebron seven years and in Jerusalem 33 years. He died at a good old age, having enjoyed long life, wealth, and honor. 
His son Solomon succeeded him. King David's accomplishments from start to finish are recorded in the annals of Samuel the prophet, the annals of Nathan the prophet, and the annals of Gad the prophet. Recorded there are all the facts about his reign and accomplishments and an account of the events that involved him, Israel, and all the neighboring kingdoms. God, help us to learn from King David. Teach us his humbleness in glorifying you. We get so caught up in it's all about us and we get so caught up in independently doing things ourselves. And we honestly think that we are in charge of the day in and day out things we do as well as decisions in our lives. Except David got it. He knew that everything came from you. He knew that his position in life came from you, his money, his honor, his sons, the opportunity for his son to become king and build the temple for you. He knew that all of that came from you, that none of it was by his own doing or by his own hand. In fact, David knew very clearly that he didn't deserve any of that after what he had done specifically with Bathsheba. None of us deserve anything that you give us. We don't deserve your grace. We don't deserve your mercy. We definitely don't deserve your forgiveness. Yet here's David, a man of your own heart, who understands that all glory, not 99%, but all 100% of glory belongs to you. All of it needs to be given back to you because it is all yours. This is our money. This is people that in relationships that come into our lives. This is jobs that, that we've been given by you. This is opportunities we have of using technology. All of it is yours. You know, I was having an interesting conversation last night with a friend who asked me a really great question. Uh, how did you fall in love with God? Was it instantaneous? Was it over time? And I can only speak for me, God, but our relationship came over time. It didn't happen overnight. And definitely not this depth of love I have for you <laughs> happened overnight. But none of it would have happened without me turning over to you everything in my life and just saying, you know, take out all of the crap that I do, all of the sinning I do, Let's just remove all of that from my life. Everything else, I'm laying at your feet. Please use these gifts that you've already given me to your glory. I don't segment my day anymore to, okay, here's my 15 minutes of Bible study in the morning. And then the rest of the day is live worldly. That's just as bad as people who are Sunday Christians. I can't do that anymore because of how much I love you. How much you have changed my heart. How much you have given me. <sighs> through no action on my part, sadly. None of what I have I deserve, but I am honored and I am blessed and overwhelmed at all that you have given me, your daily grace, your infinite patience with me, most of all your forgiveness of this heavy burden of sin that is in everyone's life. The fact that you forgive those sins so I can move on and do things for your kingdom and glorify you. See, David got that. All of it's yours. We wouldn't get anywhere or be able to do anything without you. God, allow us to turn over our hearts to you. They are yours. Allow us to turn our lives over to you. They are yours. Allow us to turn our money and our possessions over to you because they are yours. Without you, we wouldn't have them. In your son's name I pray. Amen.